when it has been started, few of the universities they have uh, joined this consortium to provide, for, for example, Stanford University, UCLA, and few other universities, they stand, uh, they have uh, they, uh, come forward this uh, something called as a consortium. And they say, that, okay, we'll offer one course under this particular topic. I have got an expertise in this particular field. Let me offer a course, okay, maybe if I say 30 hours or 45 hours, like that. Each and every uh, professor's specific courses have been offered. Even today, of course, most of the times it's like that. Then, when you offer a courses, it should not be a one-way traffic. There should be an assessment. We should know that whether the recipient are in a position to receive the courses in the way you have expected it. So they have brought in a lot of assessment procedures within the courses. They conduct a lot of assignments as well as tests before the final examination. Typically, uh, uh, in, uh, typically equivalent to a, a normal course of what we normally conduct in our uh, course curriculum. Same way they have introduced. And if you have another advantage is you are, a uh, uh, you are very proficient in that particular uh, uh, topic and you are interested in that particular topic. No need to have a formal education on that particular topic. For example, uh, as he has mentioned, maybe uh, about the planning and designing of the e-learning courses. If somebody is, going to, uh, is interested to enroll themselves under the MOOC courses, assuming that somebody can, some universities, standard universities offering that particular course, there's no uh, uh, need that you have to be a, a postgraduate in the, uh, a particular uh, uh, ease of uh, maybe uh, education or in the arts or the science. If you are interested and if you are having a basic pre process, you can enroll for this particular process. So it's a value addition to you. Right? Uh, so this is a way that this actually has been floated. Later people thought that, is it possible to make this one a very effective means? For example, if I say that I have done a course in this one, uh, you also have better done, I also have done it. So there should be some kind of an assessment to see that what is the level of your understanding after undergoing the particular course. So they have introduced a lot of assessment procedures in terms of the assignments, weekly assignments at the end of the maybe uh, 16 hours, uh, uh, each course maybe after 30 hours to 45 hours. After every three hours or four hours, you will be having an ass assessment or the assignment uh, procedures, okay? And there will be a feedback, uh, either by the uh, course <coughs> coordinator or by your peer group. Okay, you know, we'll come to that uh, little later when we talk about uh, uh, this online courses. So the purpose of these courses are, we need not have a formal education to undergo the particular courses. As long as you're having an interest and in the prerequisites for undergoing a particular course, you are free to do it. And second thing is, you can do it at your leisure hours. Uh, this is one important thing what she has asked. Uh, I have talked about both positives as well as the negatives of this uh, uh, this kind of a, uh, uh, especially her uh, question. Her question is, suppose after undergoing this particular course, whether they provide any certificates having complete, uh, successfully completed a particular course. Many of the courses they have offered you. So whether those certificates are valid for the uh, 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 by the different universities or the uh, one. In fact, those things which have been controlled through the biometric process, I'll explain you a little later, uh, later what, it, what I mean by that one, are valid courses because it has been offered by a standard, well-established universities. For example, yeah, Stanford University is offering a particular course. Certainly, it's a value addition to you. Right. But how do we monitor that? There are a lot of lacunas. Suppose if I conduct a class and if I do the assessment, I know exactly she is writing the exam. In the case of the online exam, probably some of her, her, her professor may say that, that, that person may be writing in instead of her. Because how do we monitor that whether she is taking the examination or that or not? So it's a major challenge. So that's why most of those certificate programs, which has been given as certificates, by the standard universities, they follow something called as a biometric system. Biometric systems are not simple. For example, I can take her eye scan, I can take her fingerprint, right? And based on that, I try to find out whether this is the same person is taking. Again, you can question. Probably she comes, put her biometrics, scans, and then she moves out. Other person is answering. <laughs> right? It can happen, right? 
in a normal circumstances it can happen, right? So that's the reason they ask you to write a passage. They try to find out what way you write a passage. There's some artificial intelligence oriented stuff that has been taken. Suppose if you write an article, what are the ways in which you write, how, what's your language sequences that's been followed? Based on that, your individual identity is being preserved by the system. So, apart from your biometrics, uh, your pattern of writing the assignments and the answers are also being monitored, and then only they will be given the certificate based on the uh, successful completion of the course. Right? And some of the courses, as I told you, so open courses, but anybody can enroll, there is no fee component in that one. Those certificate courses are normally taken at little low priority. Whereas there are some courses which has been offered for $39, $49, $50 and so on. Those courses have been well augmented by the most of the standard universities and they have got a better value in the for your resume. Yeah, that's true. And another advantage, uh, as she has mentioned, I did not have a computer to uh, 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 view or uh, watch those uh, lessons. I can do it in my smartphone. I can do it in my tablet. I can do it in my tablets. I can do it in my mini notepad. Right? So now this uh, uh, technology allows us to receive those materials in a different environment. So that's an advantage. Suppose somebody is traveling and travel time is two hours. It's just to hear about one hour lecture they can uh, complete it and if it is a time bonus they can even do the answers, assignments at the same time itself. So it is very effective. You can plan your uh, uh, what time you want to take and there is no boundary. I can stop it after 15 minutes and then I can resume it after uh, resuming it after 15 minutes later when I am accessing it. For example, if a lecture is a 45 minutes lecture, I have listened for first 15 minutes and I stopped it. I can come back, the system will remember that you have listened up to 15 minutes. So the next time whenever when you are coming, it will ask you, shall I start from the place what you have left last time? So you can start from the 16th minute onwards. Or suppose if you had some problem, you can start the fresh house. So these are the features they normally provide uh, in the e-content. So when we normally make this our e-content also, we have to ensure that this is happening in our modules. So, uh, and if you look into it, since he is the only person who has gone through the first three weeks, you find that first two weeks everybody feels that, oh, it's very nice, uh, very effective and all that. The third week onwards, they start to pinch off uh, seeing the materials content. The reason is, uh, it is not a linear, say for example, if I plot something as a curve, today I have learned something, tomorrow when I am learning, it's simply a, a small addition of what I have learned yesterday, right? That's what we normally call as a linear progression. Whereas here, in the most of the MOOC courses, you find that it's a geometrical progression. The first two day days, you find that, okay, it's very easy for me. I can uh, very easily able to understand and answer the questions and so on. The third, the moment you come to the third day, you find that the complexity is increased by at least two folds. When you go to the fourth uh, week, it is increased by six folds. So it's a really a challenging one also. By the time really when you finish the course, you have to be a master to complete the particular course. And when you have the uh, final examination, and based on that, they will be doing the grading. And another very important thing is, every week when you submit the assignments, your assignments have been viewed by the person who is uh, conducting the program, which is called the program coordinators, plus after the period, after you submit uh, your assignment, you will be able to see other people's submission also. Okay? So it gives you an idea, okay, how the other people are viewing it, not before you submit it. Right? I can't submit, I can't see the others' views before I submit it. After I submitted my uh, yeah, that's a very uh, very strong words you have used, but still people they do it actually. <laughs> Uh, for example, he has enrolled a course. Uh, yeah, yeah. You three are sitting together. Together, whatever he is typing is the com combined work of, 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 of all the three of you. So uh, that could be a, a cut and copy, or copy paste may be happening. Uh, that's why I told you this is a strong word. That's why I use a strong words. 
Uh, sometimes we discuss. In fact, we promote uh, uh, even for our faculty members. They let them take a course together. Maybe three or four of them uh, they take together, and then they uh, uh, submit the assignments. Maybe when they write, let them write on their own. But let them have a discussion among themselves, and then they uh, upload their assignments. This gives you a slightly a better one because somebody is able to help them in a peer level. So. We find it is a little more effective compared to the individual people are struggling to do. Because sometimes when I do my own assignment, I may struggle to finish it. So I will stop it. Because I'm not getting any help at a particular point of time. Suppose if I'm doing it that period, probably somebody may give me an additional inputs we may solve the problems. So this is one of the advantages of the uh, blended. What we mean by blended nowadays? Uh, I, I know uh, many of you might have seen the uh, uh, lecture series, e lecture series or e video series of that, uh, that has been promoted by most of the government of India of, uh, resources. Have you used any of your classroom teaching? In future, basically, okay. In will take another example. Uh, spoken to uh, What do you feel that? Uh, uh, which is a very attractive portion of that particular? What is you feel that that's not good? In a classroom environment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, of course, because this is being developed by computer science students or the ICT students, they try to concentrate more on their uh, own subjects to come. Uh, as I have mentioned, NPTEL, NPTEL, most of the lecture series are lengthy. And most of the times, just like this camera is focusing only me, okay? It will be focusing only me and my delivery. It becomes a little monotonous. In fact, the most of the foreign uh, uh, video tutorials are e-content you look into it. Hardly you are able to see the person maybe after the first few frames. Right? Immediately you switch over to the simulations and gaming, uh, the workouts, right? You don't see that person's figure uh, maybe in the next uh, uh, 20 minutes, suppose if the 20 minutes are uh, e-content, next uh, 15 to 16 minutes you don't see his face. Whereas most of the materials which we normally prepare, we focus on the uh, delivery person, uh, not the delivery content. Actually that's why that's the problem for us is our way of generally the teaching is the uh, uh, one way lecturing mode. Right? So most of the times we don't uh, 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 interact with uh, the other, uh, for example, the board is there, maybe the, the e-boards are there, the blackboards are there, the uh, other type of boards are there, other types of simulation materials are there. We don't use effectively all those materials in any of the classroom. Of course, individually you may be using one, right? Uh, so that's why we need to have a blending materials nowadays for if you have to prepare uh, e-content delivery. For example, if you want to talk a, a particular topic, is it possible for you to show some images? Is it possible for you to show some kind of a simulation? Is it possible for you to show some kind of a, a running uh, video rather than a sta static video? Is it possible? That will give a slightly a better impetus uh, to the recipients. Another thing which all of you may be using is the learning management systems, right? Content learning management systems. Uh, I think all of you may be using the Moodle software, right? Learning management system, Moodle software. Yeah. Uh, how many of you have conducted assessments using the LMS? What is the challenge for you in conducting the these assessments in the LMS? Uh, training the teachers. Training the teachers. But actually, if you look into it, uh, the moment we spend some sufficient time to uh, know the facets of uh, LMS, learning management system, it becomes very very easy. And a lazy person like me, I always I find it is very useful to me. The reason is, this year I have created a question, say 50 questions I have created, and I have categorized those 50 questions into say three categories: easy, maybe medium level, and a complex level. I have created, okay, uh, on a particular topic. Next year when I am uh, teaching the students, I am going to teach a different set of students. I can add 10 more questions now. I have got a bag of uh, 60 questions. Third year is going to be 70 questions, 80 questions. Now you find that the resource what we have prepared earlier is useful to us subsequently, right? For the assessment. Same thing for the material also. So 
this, this time I have prepared a PPT material for a particular topic. I just posted it in the LMS. Next time what I can do is, I can take that one, I can do some kind of a modification and then I can post it. So I will have a version 1 and version 2. right? So this affects whatever the amount or the resources which we have spent on preparing the material is going to be useful for the later use also. So, so it calls for a lot of uh, motivation to be given to the teachers because we are used to write online quiz we can write. Uh, only 20 questions the maximum we will be writing. Yeah. So we are going to be a hard copy. But if it is going to be a Moodle, then we have to generate at least uh, 60 questions. Which needs, uh, which calls for a lot yeah, of that's it. What I was telling you, uh, basically, uh, even actually, I uh, uh, asked most of my students, for example, they prepare for the placement activities. I give a topic to the students. See, this particular chapter, this particular topic, uh, maybe 60 students are there, 60 topics I will give to the students. Each one of you have to give me 10 10 questions along with the answers. Right? So, 10 questions, 60 students, 600 questions is available in my pool. Only thing is, I'll go through all the things. I'll categorize them. Okay, this is the easier one. This is the application-oriented stuff, or this is the knowledge-oriented stuff. I categorize them and I put it into the Moodle. That student who has prepared, he can answer only that ten questions. But now, when they study the overall subject, if they are able to answer that six hundred question, they will be almost thorough. And give a very very small topic to the student so that each and every line of your textbook here will pick up a question. That means once they go through the 600 questions, they will be almost thorough with the particular subjects. And they also come to know that what way they have to prepare the questions. And we also, as a teachers, we always have a, a problem how to actually, especially the uh, straight, actually uh, uh, our short term answers, short answers or the long answers is very easy for us to conceptualize. The same thing you want to visualize it in a uh, multiple choice question. You find it's really challenging. It's not so easy, right? So we, uh, each one of us, we follow a different strategy to even to prepare, prepare our MCQs, multiple choice questions. For example, out of the four choices, two choices should be very, very close. And one choice, just by looking into it, a person should be able to eliminate. Second choice, by just applying a thought, they should be able to eliminate. But a person who is able to uh, uh, deliver the, uh, the final answer, should be able to discriminate between the very good close practice based answers. That's one thing. Another thing is, probably all of you as you are teaching the IIT patterns where multiple answers may be correct. Right? In MCQs, my first answer is correct, third answer is correct, fourth answer is correct. The student has to write one, three, four. If they write one, three, four only, then I will consider that the answer is correct. Right? So if they write only three and four, it is more plus a wrong answer. So this kind of uh, things which we can very easily we can frame it, but we have to spend a lot of time initially to conceptualize that kind of uh, environment, especially the learning management systems. So I just, uh, as the time is short, I just quickly go through this uh, material. Now, for the instructional designs, now the acquisition of knowledge and skill are the very, very, uh, very important. And the communication, what we have to do is in the e-content has to be effective. So this is one very, very important thing which we have to look into when we are making e-content delivery. 